right, if everyone will stand please, we'll open the meeting with a uh, pledge of the flag led by Commissioner Lowry and uh, Mr. Smallwood say a prayer for us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Father, you take care of us, you watch over us, and love us, and thank you for that. Ask that you'll give the city wisdom tonight, give them guidance. Um, just take care of our law enforcement, our first responders, all the military folks, and uh, we'll just praise you for it. In Christ's name, amen. 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 <coughs> call the meeting to order. Thank you all for coming. Before we get started uh, with the uh, agenda, I'd like to make a comment. We, uh, we uh, have a familiar face uh, sitting in the attorney chair tonight. Uh, last Friday, our attorney, uh, Adam Albritton, called me with uh, talked about his desire to resign. And uh, we both came to an agreement that he would uh, think about it over the weekend, pray on it, and come make a decision one way or the other Monday. Yesterday, he called me yesterday morning, said he intended to resign to take care of his business in Panama City and work with his clients in Bay County. Uh, we got a letter to that effect yesterday afternoon. And so at, at this point, uh, Mr. Gibson was gracious enough to just uh, fill in for tonight. And uh, if, we, if we need any legal advice, we, we have an attorney with us that's uh, familiar with how we operate. So, uh, Tom, we appreciate you doing that. And uh, with that, we'll move on to the uh, first item is a, a consent agenda. The minutes of regular meeting of November 19th. Motion to adopt. Okay, there's a motion to adopt. Those there a second? Second. Second to adopt the minutes of the regular meeting 1119. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Right. Opposed, same sign. Motion passed 4 votes. Okay, uh, well, building department, we won't have that this time. Long term recovery. Miss Nancy, I think, is going to be here the next meeting. Nancy Stewart, uh, PSJRA update. Uh, no Mr. Ashbrook? No, Nancy. Okay, all right. Uh, down where we have uh, a city attorney gentleman, we we've got to uh, we've got to make a decision of what uh, our plans are for uh, a permanent city attorney. So uh, I'll open up the floor for comments, suggestions, uh, to which way you guys want to go. Mayor, I wonder has staff reached out uh, to any anyone that may have interest? And, and then the second question would be. Uh, do we have to follow the procurement <coughs> procedures for that in RFQ, RFP, whatever it may be, uh, to make that happen? Seeing uh, as this is an emergency situation. Yeah, I'll, I'll defer to our, our acting attorney. Uh, attorney services are not covered by any of the procurement, any of the state procurement rules and regulations. So while if you felt like it was a good idea to go out for qualifications or uh, proposals it's not a requirement of state law okay thank you sir so what are our options there is a is a would it be smart for us to maybe just pay <coughs> for now then go off for the process and if the interim's interested they can also apply or what would you what do you recommend i mean this is your show Mary. <laughs> we we can reach out to the and and, and uh you guys know how I'm a, I'm a local guy. I, I think we should have local a local attorney. It's, it's uh, much easier on staff uh, in that regard and, and a little bit easier on us also. So, uh, I, yeah, I'd, I'd like to reach out to, uh, to someone local. Uh, I, I don't know if you guys want to uh, let the city manager uh, go with that and bring it back to us or if anyone's got suggestions or have talked to anybody that, that's interested it just happened yesterday afternoon and so frankly I, I haven't had a chance to uh, sit down and talk to anyone <coughs> about are you interested in in this position I think Tom's doing a really good job tonight <laughs> so uh, <laughs> 
No, I, well, I take it back. I, I do take it back. I have reached out to Mr. Gibson, and, and he said he, he served with us for a long time. He did a wonderful job, and we did appreciate it. But he's at this point in time, he's not not interested in uh, being back permanently. That's the first thing I asked Jim this this morning when I talked to him. <laughs> So he, he probably stick around like two or three months. Give us a little time. Um, I, I prefer to stick around for the evening. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so uh, we we got to uh, we got to do something. Uh, if you would like the city manager to canvas uh, local attorneys, uh, we can uh, entertain a motion to allow him to canvas uh, and and come back to us. Other option that we can go out for an RFQ if we want to go out for an RFQ if we want if we write an RFQ for local attorneys it, it would just you know stay local uh, so you got two options well Mayor I did I did reach out to our, our one of our former attorneys that that did express an interest in it uh, I mean and I think you all know when when we first brought him on board I was more for the guy outside of town and that didn't work out for us and so I think he did a great job for us and I would love for that to be you know, considered by this board and the service that he provided I think Jim was happy with him um, and so if we could reach out to him and see if he's truly interested now that it's for real okay I don't have a problem in that, in that I mean you go it's pretty public record you're talking about uh, Clint, 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 Clint McKay okay, okay. Uh, but uh, you don't, you know, I just think you need to reach out to him as well as others uh, and see who's truly interested because it, it, uh, it ties you down. I mean, you well, two, we're two constrained. Maybe, <laughs> month, we we got to be. We voted on the budget already, Mayor, too, so we got to find someone willing to do it for what we've already put in our budget. That's correct. Or less. Or less. <laughs> less. Less is more. I think my question would probably be if, if we've got two or three that are interested in, and we don't, we end up having to go out RFQ it or or so. Um, yeah. We need to think about that unless we, we, we just vote on. Well, I think indirectly uh, what, what we're allowing him to do is, is kind of a quasi RFQ, isn't it? We find out who's interested and then we negotiate with them as who do we decide we'd, we'd like him to negotiate with. So I, I'll make a motion to that effect. We allow staff to reach out to the local attorneys and make a recommendation back to the board as to uh, okay. what they have found and then we can go from there. Okay, motion, there's a second. Second, with a little bit of discussion, okay. can, we, can we have that information at the next meeting? I mean, we are gonna need, I don't know if Tom's willing to come back again, but we do have one more meeting in December. Can we close this thing next meeting? I'd like to. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, two weeks. <laughs> <We're still reaching. coughs> second okay. stance. Second stance. Okay. Any more discussion? Discussion from the audience. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed. Same sign. Motion carries. Four of Jim. Let's go. We'll get to work. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, old business, Jim. Yes, sir. The first item we have is the government complex grant. Uh, we've been working towards it. Uh, mayor's had some good discussions. I will let him tell you some of the news he has gotten back from some of the local developers that we may have some leads on some options from the mayor. Yeah, we, I had an excellent meeting uh, with uh, George Gonzalez, CEO of St. Joe Company. Uh, he was gracious enough to come over and meet with Jim and I. Uh, and uh, he knew before he came what what we wanted and he came with, with some options for us. Very, very nice uh, a couple of pieces of property that that uh, he's at this point in time he said he had to get them appraised uh, before he could uh, he, he knows how much money we have to spend and uh, so he's of course got to answer the stockholders uh, so he's he got to sell it at appraised or above appraised value so anyway uh, there's, there's a couple of nice pieces one's five acres and one, they're two parcels together. They're like 5.6 acres, both great locations. And uh, we're, we're waiting on him to uh, get back with us with, uh, with, our, with his 
I guess you'd say, uh, appraisals and uh, options for us that, that will fit within the amount of money we have. But he was very, very nice, and uh, so I think we're going to get a piece of property to build a new city hall. Okay. Good news. Uh, the next item we have is Capital City Bank lease. I did receive a call last week from Capital City Bank. Their intention is to sign the lease as, at the approved amount of $3,000 a month. <clears throat> right now what we're looking at is they want to get it built in less than a year. Uh, so what they have right now, at the initial we had a, a lengthier lease agreement on there up to 15 months. They uh, agreed to terms of nine months on month to month. So right now it's on their desk for signature. And from there, if they go beyond the nine months, they'll have to come back for the board on a month to month basis. But it is at the amount that you wanted, $3,000. Uh, <coughs> will that begin November or December? December 1. So okay. it's under the understanding they know they have to pay us for the December month. Okay. Now that will impact our budget if they don't go the 12 months. Mm -hmm. Somewhat. He only budgeted 30, I believe, Mary. I think I 36, yeah. I thought. I believe, I believe it is only 30. I want to okay, check. Okay, good. Well, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. But it definitely gets us close. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Okay, good. Moving along. The next item we have was Robert's Rules of Order. Uh, we've been working over the course of a month or two trying to look at what our options are. Uh, I think Mayor has some information that was provided down through uh, former city attorney gave me some ideas on some information I think mayor want to talk to you tonight about what he had. Well, well, it's just uh, uh, Attorney Albrecht put some things together. It's uh, Robert's Rules of Order is very complicated and lengthy and try to pare those down somewhat. We've got uh, somewhat of a resolution in front of you. What I'd like uh, you guys to do is take it home, study it, scratch out areas that you feel like is not important and let's uh, come up with something, uh, uh, a way that, a uh, formal way that we'll run the, run these meetings. Uh, so everybody will know up front that we're, this this is what we're going by. So uh, that's all I have on that. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, moving along then, if we have another question on it, uh, the last bit order of business under old business is RFP 2019-13, the freight paint park gazebo. We went out for bid again. We did receive some bids, uh, but they were uh, substantially higher than what we have uh, currently received from our insurance or from FEMA. Right now, what we staff recommendation is we continue to look at it. Mike is actually working with FEMA to see if we can get a take from them as to whether we will uh, receive funding for it. Uh, I don't know that he's got a, a clear answer at this point in time on there, but. No, FEMA has indicated that if the actual cost, if we submit actual invoices are over what they've calculated, they will up that number. But they also indicated that the, the process had to be within our uh, purchasing policy and followed and that the bids had to be reasonable. So I, I sent the bids into FEMA asking for their review to give us some indication. Uh, and, and they have not indicated back to us yet. We have a meeting with them Thursday. Uh, so, so I don't know that we're going to be able to pin them to the table and say they're going to say, yes, we will uh, We will definitely honor that amount um, but but that's the indication they're giving so it's, it's not quite clear to me yet uh, but again we're meeting with them Thursday and hopefully we can get some clarification from them on that or their their engineers have had an opportunity to review those bids uh, and, and qualify the low bid as reasonable uh, for that repair for, for the uh, for the public to know the uh, low bidder for uh, uh, rebuilding the gazebo slash pier is four hundred and sixty eight thousand dollars so uh we we respectfully decline to accept that so anyway yeah i realize this is an iconic figure in the city and we want to continue looking at our options on there but at this point the staff can't make a recommendation to you but it's been four hundred sixty eight thousand dollars how much did uh, FEMA allow initially? 
they're still calculating. They haven't finalized that number. The current number is 130K. So, but, but again, they are still, that has not been a finalized uh, a project on their list. They're still working. Okay. We'll continue to work. There you go. Uh, the next item we have is a reference to fair housing. Uh, Mr. Bruce Bowser is here tonight. And I believe at this point in time, Mayor, I think it will be appropriate to close out your current meeting and go to a public hearing. That um, not so. <laughs> the good news is that this isn't going to be a fair housing uh, activity, but it doesn't need to be a CDBG update. All right. Very um, good. <coughs> over the weekend, I began to have a nagging feeling that, you know, I know we used, when we have a, an event for realtors and professionals, that we always do an advertisement. We haven't always done it for city the commission meetings in the past. And I just wanted to check in with the uh, <coughs> DEO staff to ensure. And he said, well, if it's, if it's a published agenda and it says workshop, you're good. Um, as it is, we advertise by online and it doesn't say workshop, it says fair housing. Which is, so to abundance of caution, I'd like to just do a short ad in the paper and then have the workshop for fair housing in two weeks on the 17th and still gets within this quarter so we're good uh, but i have other news in that <clears throat> the uh, topic of coming up uh, uh, where were we because they had expected us to put in a um, advertisement for contracting shortly after we got the release of funds in september and um, been directed by the staff that where you know, the city is looking to marry that project with other funds from trident to get that all finished at once. And um, CDP said, well, if you do that, you can't use our money unless you go through an expanded environmental review, which would take about four months to complete and get approved with all the notice. So what we should do immediately is send a letter to DEOs indicating our intent to advertise immediately and go up for bid for construction. Um, we're getting pretty much behind the clock. Our contract opened. <coughs> um, February 11th of last year, we need to finish by February 11th of 2021. So pretty much need to start going after bid, getting that contractor, getting the whatever period of construction it is, and have time for closeout, punch list and all that before February 11th, 2021. So that's pretty much where we are right now. And I uh, have a dread letter graphic for your signature that will just inform the city or the CEO where we're at because they're, they're asking that question. Right, so so are you going to uh, do the advertising in the paper or do you want staff to do it? Or <coughs> the engineer does it, I believe, or <coughs> I'm not sure who does it. Do it. I can put it in there, I just need the dates from the engineer on what's, what are appropriate dates for the bid advertisement to be available and then when he wants to have them open, we do the ad. So, so we'll coordinate. Okay, if you'll do that, that'd be great. Right. Okay. All right. Any questions for Bruce? Appreciate you coming. Out, All right. Always. <laughs> See you in two weeks. All right. Good deal. Uh, the next item we have, Mayor, is a reference to our postage and mailing machine. We currently have a machine that's the lease is expiring that's under a state contract. If you turn over to page five and six, there's actually for us today a lease agreement. There is a, a typo that's in on page five that says two ninety nine per month. It's supposed to correlate to it's four fifty eight. I did get that correct on one for our signature if we decide to move forward on it. But what this is, this is for our machine that actually uh, separates all of our that stuffs all of our envelopes and does our postage that we do for our utility bill. Uh, currently, it is uh, a little less. It's, I think it's three hundred and seventy dollars a month currently we pay. For basically the same machinery in five years it's going up to 458 but it's, it's a much needed piece of equipment to get out our utility bill <coughs> this would be for a 60 month lease. it's not 48 it's 60 and it's 458 dollars questions or comments is it in the <coughs> uh yes yeah, so we currently pay for it we already have an extended lease on there it does go up a little bit but we paid it last month and we need to pay for it next month. Yes. Is there a motion to approve this lease? Okay, there's a motion by Commissioner Ashbrook. 
I'll second. Second. Uh, Commissioner Lowry, any discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passed 4 and 0. Oh. Uh, the freight paint park tennis court. If you have noticed the road by in the last couple of weeks, we do have the fence that has been reinstalled over at the park. Uh, we'll continue to look at what our options are. So it's back under tonight. Uh, Mr. LaCour did have a, uh, a meeting today. He did have a forum to get you a formal vote or anything from the parks committee that was set up by the board. Uh, but he did have some discussion with members on there, some different ideas for you. So we'll continue to work on that. He actually has some quotes too to restrike the tennis court slash possibly pickleball court. All those came under ten thousand dollars, so it looks like you could resurface it and restripe it for less than ten thousand dollars. But the bigger question is, we got to make some decisions on how you want the use to be. Do you want it to be pickleball? Do you want it to go out to tennis, hybrid? Those kind of things. We need to work towards a goal as to how we want to look at the end of the day. Mike, you want to? Give us a little update on that, please, sir. Um, yes, sir. Um, before the before the holidays, I did email the members of the committee, and, and we weren't able to, to get a quorum for a meeting today. But but I did ask them to poll the community uh, and, and and send in emails or, or call me uh, with indication. And we did have four members get together today to discuss the issue. Um, and the general consensus from that discussion was that. Uh, the recommendation to to resurface the court and line it for both tennis and pickleball uh, and then move forward with establishing a permanent pickleball court uh, at the facility as well um, and, and so that was the general consensus of the discussion to reline it as, as multi-use uh, but move forward with with dedicating a, a, a specific court for pickleball okay. I uh, comments from from here. I see uh, quite a few folks uh, from the pickleball community, and there's probably some tennis folks out there too. So I'd like to give them a chance to speak if they'd like to. Go ahead, Commissioner. Uh, I have one question that I had asked. I know that uh, there was interest with the tennis players. I spoke to a few uh, a week or so ago, and I, I know it wasn't all of them, but I, I did find out that the tennis players need lights okay and and the two that played quite a bit of tennis um, said to me that they would be comfortable with going wherever they had a nice court if it was lit so I asked the question of Jim uh, we have some funding that's going to be left uh, over in that grant for the trail lighting so the question to our engineer is could we divert some of that funding to a different court and the one that I was thinking about was the one that the uh, school now owns adjacent to the soccer fields there's I believe it's two tennis courts there and before speaking to the school board I wanted to know is that an option out of the trail grant yeah we because the trail goes right we'll certainly right there. ask um, we'll certainly ask we, we need to light that trail quite a bit. That's okay. right. That's yeah, right. yeah. Exactly. And I believe the trail actually splits there. It comes back around <coughs> both sides of the tennis court. Yeah. Let me ask. Trails on both sides? Yeah. They took them. So, and, and I wanted the tennis players and the pickleball players to know that we're looking at that option. And if the funding is available, my plan is to light and resurface uh, partnership with the with, with the school board, have them maybe pay for the resurfacing, and we'll supply the lights off of the grant, and then we would have a place that would be strictly for tennis, and then we would have Frank Pay Park eventually go to pickleball. Uh, but that's just an idea, and then we can discuss if that's a good idea or a bad idea. There you go. All right. Anyone like to speak? I see someone standing and ready to go. Please state your name and sign sign the uh, sign in there, please, sir. Good evening. My name is Rod Regal. I'm the organizer for the Port St. Joe Pickleball Club. 
Now that's normally like trying to herd a bunch of cats. But tonight, we speak with one voice. We have 71 members. They all want dedicated pickleball courts at a park. Currently, we set up temporary nets every time we play. So this means that only people who have nets and only at designated times can play. <coughs> if we had permanent pickleball nets, then anybody could play at any time. And I predict that if we do that, the numbers <coughs> in the court would skyrocket. If we have permanent nets, we could also do leagues, clinics, exhibitions, maybe even small tournaments. Because pickleball is a social game, we need to have all the courts together. Some plans have not done that. They need to be together. Imagine that you wanted to throw a party, but you had to split the party between two houses on the opposite ends of a block. Your party's doomed before it even starts. So that's why we want the courts together. It's a very social game. I'm also the local contact for the National Pickleball Association. I get numerous requests from people all over the country who want to come and play pickleball at Bay Park. In addition, every year we get more members because they drive by as we're playing. They see us playing, they stop and play. That's what pickleball players do. They just get, hop out of the car and come play. So that's why we think Pate Park is the ideal location for a permanent pickleball facility. Eight years ago, we started by drawing chalk outlines of our courts. <coughs> Last year, less than two weeks after Hurricane Michael hit, we were out there shoveling sand and debris off the courts and erecting temporary fences at our own cost. We have, for eight years, demonstrated our commitment to our sport, to the city of Port St. Joe, and to Pay Park. At Pay Park, we already have parking, we already have restrooms, we already have a path and fence. It would be the most economical use of city resources to just put pickleball courts there. Now, in addition, because it's the holiday season, it would be a great Christmas gift to all 71 members. <laughs> you can stand up now, some of you, to establish a permanent pickleball facility at the park. And rest assured, we'll need to go to cookies up. Merry Christmas. Thank you for listening. And I'll answer any questions you might have. Right. I definitely know. I've known Rod for a couple of few years now, and I know they are committed. Uh, I, I used to play a little bit. Um, don't have a lot of time now, but um, you guys are definitely committed and always there. Um, so I'm, I'm going to support you there. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, Rod. Okay. Next. I believe I have an opponent of you. <laughs> Keith Crossman, tennis player. <laughs> I'm not an enthusiast. I am an advocate. Uh, I bought my house here because of that court. 10 years ago. We've been playing tennis in that court for 10 years. I have 65 people on my list that I call to play right now in Apalachicola, Panama City, and now even in uh, Mexico Beach. Mexico Beach somehow managed to get their tennis and pickleball court up and running with new nets around it, new wind socks, looks nice. Tennis, pickleball. We haven't been there for the last 13 months because tennis players can't play with a net this tall. I got an 80 mile an hour overhead that'll make you cry 
you can't keep that inside a court with a little four, little four foot net. We need a court. We have nets, we have the uh, fence up now, so we can play. There's a lot of us out there, and a lot of us right now are traveling all over the county just to find some place to play. I had spoke in March of 2018 with Jim Anderson and Jim Norton at those courts at the high school who specifically said, Jim Norton said, you will never get a dime from the county schools for these courts because they are not part of our curriculum. I have a quote here for $14,900 from Surface Specialties. I gave, I gave uh, Mike the name. The name. $14,900 will, will make those courts pristine. Um, Mike he, uh, Norton said no. Um, Jim Anderson said, I've got no money, which is you know, I expected. Uh, he said, I might give you $7,000. The 12 people that were there also, I got $4,000 from them, but not enough. I went to the TDC, they said it's school property, we couldn't do a thing for you. I've been to the USTA, they said, you don't have a junior's program in place, so we can't help you there either. So I've come full circle back to you again. But I don't know if I want to put that in discussion. We love paid court. They love paid court. And that, it's just an awesome place to be. I have no problem sharing a court right now. I would love to see a tennis court there and a pickleball court. We've coexisted for a few years. We can, we can get along for a few more. If you want to do another pickleball court and a tennis court, we're fine with that. Just give us some place to play in paid in pay court if you can. It's, it's, it's not rocket science. It's, it's already been done for a long time. <coughs> Mexico Beach has proven that we can coexist. I've played there many times with <coughs> other pickleball players playing right next to us. So don't take it away from us. They have separate courts. They have they have they have pickleball uh, and tennis separate. Well, they have <coughs> in the, in the tennis court. They have four pickleball courts lined up, just like ours. Okay. All right, and also right adjacent to that in the um, basketball court, they have three other courts. Okay. So. Like I said, we've played together before. And, and, and that kind of goes to what I want to say, too, is that in that little 10-mile radius or 8-mile radius, there are 17 pickleball courts right now. And I understand what he says about having a group together. It's a very social. I've played pickleball. It's a nice sport. I, but I like tennis. And I have a whole list of people who love tennis. And we, we play it three times a week in Appalachia College. There's a large group of us that do that. We just want a court. So if we resurface the ones at the uh, at the uh, school, <coughs> would that help? That would not hurt a bit. And lighting. Yeah. Everybody can't have the view. I, mean, I understand that. I understand that. I, I, we want a place to play. Yeah. And, and the lights there would be, right now, uh, a lot of our people do work. Um, so they have to play in the evening. As a matter of fact, I played Sunday in Pate Court. Yeah, I, uh, they're nice. I spoke to uh, Superintendent Norton today, and uh, he's willing to work with us. I, I'm really? not sure he can come up with any money, but but he would. It's a possibility he could lease them to us for a dollar a year for 100 years or that something the, like that. That was the problem I had with the TDC. They said since it was school property, they couldn't help us. Right. So so he's aware that we want to do some kind of co-op thing. Uh, I don't think he can do anything monetarily based on his budget and so forth, right. but we might can, okay? So that's, that's an option. Okay. Well, I just wanted you to know, let you know yeah. that the, I know that there's a large group of pickleball people. I, I've seen them. I've had to deal with them. We've yeah. had discussions before. Um, and that's okay. But like I said, we've coexisted for a long time. There's no reason not to do it now until we figure out a, a, a final solution that'll make everybody happy. Just don't forget us because there's only there's only 60 of us, there's not 75. So we're, we're not going to forget anybody. We, but the, the point is, if we're going to research <coughs> something, I, I personally don't, and I'm a tennis player, have been for years, I, I don't see, it, it's not going to be good to put pickleball lines and tennis lines when you resurface and relining it, it's just I, I, I agree. It's kind of so confusing. so we got we really need to decide we're going to do this here and this over here i, I have, have a question yeah go ahead if you had the option of 
using the Frank Pate court for both tennis and pickleball versus having a new court that's only tennis at the, at the soccer field. That's little, Which one is better? I, I know. That, that's, that's, I would love a new court. And those are the ones out there at the high school. The uh, foundation is amazing. Uh, even after all these years of uh, yeah. ignorance, they, nobody's touched them. The courts, the nets that are there now, I put up from my old tennis court in Atlanta. I'm the one that tightened them up. I buy the center straps for them. I maintain them because nobody else will. This, the structure for that court is amazing. I don't know what they did, but there's no cracks. There's no dips. Uh, when I sent the pictures off the, yeah, when I sent this pic, the uh, pictures off the sports surfaces, they're like, how old are they? I'm like, I think they're like 15 years old, I believe. And they're, and they're in amazing shape. Wouldn't take a whole lot to Would make Would you turn that into uh, Mike, if you would, yeah. your, your yeah. estimate yeah. there, if you yeah. wouldn't mind? Yeah. Uh, <coughs> Like that. Just give okay. us a place to play. Well, and that's what, you know, from the very beginning, what we have all agreed to is the best scenario, the best situation, and the best outcome would be for the tennis people to have a place and be happy to play in the pickleball. Myself, I played tennis and pickleball. And when I first went and played pickleball, I thought, oh, if I was here to play tennis, I would not be happy. <laughs> I'd, I'd be confused with all the lines. Yeah, and I, I really enjoyed playing the pickleball. But I looked at it as a tennis player, and that's why I think that question really has to be answered. Would you rather share the court or have your own court at the if, soccer If the field? option's sharing or getting a new court for ourselves, oh, yeah, it's a no-brainer. I mean, if, I would love to have a brand new court that has just tennis lines on it. And so would everybody. If you get some lights out there, life right would, with lights, life, life would be good. Okay, um, I think we can make that happen. Uh, so I'll give this to Mike. Um, like I said, just don't forget us. It's we're out there. We're we're we may be quiet, but we're out there. So, all right. Thank you very much. Right, thank you. I have a question for staff. Let me take a picture of it. I'll get hmm? back to you. I'm cold. Let me just take a picture. Of it. Oh, Mike, has FERNAP applied for any grants yet this cycle? Uh, we, we have submitted two uh, a grant requests for FERDAP, but we've missed, I mean, cycle's closed for this period. It would be so next October. Be this year. Yes. Okay. okay. Anyone else? Okay. Got a hand? Whoever wants to get up first. Come on up. Please sign in, state your name. My name is Linda Vance, and I'm an unrepentant pickleball player. <laughs> I don't want to get into the mailing list debate, whose mailing list is larger than who else's mailing list. We have 71, they have 65. But I do want to address the question of frequency of use. I recognize that the last 13 months has been somewhat anomalous because of the post-hurricane situation. But even prior to the hurricane, we played, the pickleball players played three times a week minimum for at least two hours a time. At any given day, there are at least 12 of us playing. Even my rudimentary math skills tell me that that's 72 person hours per week playing pickleball. The current conditions don't really work. The sharing doesn't work for all the reasons that you've been discussing. It's hard to play pickleball when there's tennis lines. It's hard to play tennis when there's pickleball lines. We need a dedicated pickleball court now. The other issue is that we don't have a lot of alternatives. Certainly there are courts in, in Mexico Beach. We can drive to Mexico Beach. But those of us who live in Port San Joe, which are most of us sitting in the room, can walk or bike to the pickleball courts in Pate Park. I think our commitment is unchallenged. As Rod pointed out, we were out there only pickleballers, I would note, right after the hurricane with our shovels and our blowers. And we were making it happen. So, you know, you can look at us all in the back of the room. We don't have five or eight years to wait for a dedicated court. We'll be lucky. <laughs> we're kind of in a hurry. <laughs> so I, well, this is what I want to urge you to take into account. You know, when you consider this decision, I'd like to see you be using some rubrics about how much use there is, how much commitment there is, and how many options there are. There are 
tennis courts at the school. There are tennis courts in Highland View. Apparently, there are wonderful tennis courts in Apalachicola from what we're hearing tonight. But we as pickleball players really need a dedicated facility at Payton. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay, let's, let's have one more and then uh, close it out. Come on up. I'm a pickleball player. Your name, name for the way. Oh, Gene B. H. Thank you. Uh, I'm a pickleball player and probably the elder in the group. Um, as you probably know, it's the fastest growing sport in America. Unfortunately, tennis is <coughs> declining. That does not mean we shouldn't have equal opportunity for both. But to Put pickleball courts on a tennis court is like lining uh, a runway in Atlanta. I mean, it's lines all over the place. It, it's just, it doesn't work. So my suggestion is what you were talking about is do the high school for tennis and do the pickleball courts resurface the tennis court for pickleball because that is the practical and it's also the uh, most economical way to satisfy both our needs. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys, we've we've heard uh, quite a bit. Anybody else want to make a comment? I better make a decision <laughs> before we this turns into a well. Uh, we can we can if you guys want to do that tonight. Fine. Or I was going to say. Next meeting, we're going going to make a decision. Well, I think well, we should it. wait and hear from the, the school <laughs> board and for the funding of the of the trail lighting. Because if the if the funding of the of the trail it is approved, where we can move some money over, light the court, we can work with with uh, the school board to work out a fair uh, deal. I mean, we have the money to to resurface the court. We have the money to do whatever we want to do at the court that's currently at Frank Pate Park. Um, the, the only other idea as I would ask is, I think in the back of the room is probably the best pickleball player and one of the best tennis players that uh, is in Port St. Joe. And Robert, I'm not sure which group he's sitting with tonight, because uh, he, he plays both. But uh, if you have anything to say, Robert, to add, I, I think you would be an expert in the area of both tennis and pickleball. Can we sign? Please, we we know you, but you're on the record, please, sir. My name is Robert Thomas, and it's going to take me about five minutes, seven minutes to say what I'm going to say up here. Uh, I was out there playing pickleball the other day, and you guys came out there and said that you was going to, the first thing y'all want to do is put a tennis court, and resurface it with tennis court lines, and put two pickleball courts at one end, two at the other end. That, that was fine with me. And, uh, but the pickleball people want four all together, <coughs> close to, right together. And I'm like this, LB, I don't know where they write this down, but me and her play tennis a lot. I play tennis and pickleball. And I'm really just here to help her get the tennis court, to be honest with you. And the reason for that is, seven years ago, I'm going to say seven years ago, when he was mayor, he came to me, and we came, me and Rob both went to him and asked him about the pickleball course dedicated course and everything. And he came to me and said, Robert, most of these people right here, they wasn't here at the time. He's a newcomer here. But six, seven years ago, he asked me, he said, Robert, we got the money in the city budget to build your pickleball course, dedicated course. And he, he confirmed this now. So he told me, he said, Robert, all I want you to do is get Mexico Beach and Port St. Joe to come together. And we'll build a course for them. 
but the courts are going to be on the North Port St. Joe area. If y'all don't know, North Port St. Joe is a black neighborhood. And what we did, I went to Mexico Beach, I went to Port St. Joe, and I asked each one of them, I said, look, the mayor told me to come to you guys, and they told me to tell y'all they're going to build some dedicated pickleball courts for you. And all y'all got to do is, do is come together and play together. I did that. And like I said, I'm saying this because they took something away from me. And when I get to the end, you understand what I'm talking about. They took something away from me. LV, if you don't give her a court, she's going to be in the same situation that I was in. She's going to lose the tennis court out here at Frank Pay Park. Um, she's going to lose, lose the tennis court at Frank Pay Park. So I did what the mayor asked me to do. I went to Mexico Beach, asked them how they felt about it. I went to Sports San Joe, asked them how they felt about it. And I am the only, at the time, I was the only black, I was the only black playing this game of pickleball with a hundred and, I'm going to say 175 white people. No, no, no bad intentions about that. Right? But I went to them, and the whites from Mexico Beach and the whites from Port St. Joe, they would not come together. And I thought it was because they didn't like each other, to be honest with you. But this is what came out of their mouth. Robert, I don't give a damn. If they build a court in North Fort St. Joe, I'm not going over there. That come out of all of them. Out. They said, he, you asked him, he, he told me he had the money for this. They didn't want to go to the north side because of the black side of town. They, got, they had dedicated courts. Rex had the money for dedicated courts when they have dedicated courts. But they didn't want to go in the black. And I, said, I asked them, I said, why don't y'all want to go over there? I don't want to ride through them old beat up houses y'all got over there. It's scary over there. And I'm, like I said, I'm the only black playing with these people. And that was an insult to me. It really was. And it's still an insult to think, but I don't really care no more. Like I, like I tell Rod, I'm not going to get up here. I'm going to tell y'all, I'm telling y'all this story, because they had the opportunity to get the course. They didn't want the course on the black side of town. Not that the God heaven truth. That's the way it is. They didn't want the courts on the black side of town. They had the courts. They had the money for them. And Rex, am I lying to you about it? Isn't that true, Rex? Yeah. He's, he's confirming this. They had the courts. And I don't want LV to feel like I feel. So I'm, I'm here really for LV. I don't want her to lose a tennis court at Frank Pay Park. I'm going I'm to be honest with you. That happened to me. I wanted, when, they, when Rex told me he had the money for the courts at North Port St. Joe, I was excited because, like I said, I was the only black player in the court. I could have got more blacks on the north side of town involved in pickleball. But the white sands, they don't want to come over there because of the dilapidated houses, the neighborhood look bad. Well, go around and buy the courthouse and come in there. They won't look that bad. <laughs> you know? they, still, they, still, they still didn't want it. So I'm not for the pickleball or tennis. I'm for LP. I don't want to feel the way I feel when I had to come back and tell you that the white people told me. I'm not leaving Mexico Beach. I'm not leaving Beacon Hill. I'm not leaving Avalanche School to go on the north side to play no pickleball. And that is the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. So now, it's your decision what you want to do. I'm not trying to call no reference in or nothing. But I'm just telling you the truth. And Rex, you know it's the truth. Yep. What I'm saying to you. Yes. So now, what y'all do with that, if I get down and go back and get my little seat, that's on you. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Right. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Robert. This white guy will, from Mexico Beach will come over here and play with you. <laughs> Are we ready to move on, guys? We're going to have one more. We, we, okay, come on up, young lady. One more. Yeah, you go. Mr. Mayor, um, I'm not a citizen of Port St. Joe. I do have a business and a building. My name is Cheryl Bradley, and I do not have an 80 mile an hour overhead. <laughs> but I play tennis, and I played tennis for many, many years at Frank Pate. I played with my 25 year old daughter and my 75 year old dad. And I ask that you, before we think, oh, we might can work out a deal with the school board, that we have some kind of definitive agreement before we do anything at Frank Pate because this is the only tennis court we have. 
and there's no question there's a contingency of a lot of pickleball players very nice people but there are other options for pickleball there's nothing if you take this, this is the only tennis court and so if it could work out something I just think that would be more helpful to have a plan than saying well we might work out something with the school or we may or may not and maybe not do anything right now until you have a better answer I'm, I agree I agree we, because we definitely do. They're just, there's a lot of options, and I know you have limited money, but it just, with the back and forth and the sharing the court and this, that, and the other, I don't think that that's an option, but I do want you to see a face of just an average person. You haven't seen us playing tennis because there's not been a fence. You can play pickleball without a fence. If there wasn't a fence there, I would just be chasing tennis balls in the bank because I'm not LB and I don't play like they do. So that's, I don't think you've seen the presence there, but in recent years, you've resurfaced the courts. You did a lot of work out there because there were people playing tennis, even before pickleballers, and they, people will really just disappear. So please just have a plan before you just good do idea. something. Very good. Thank you, sir. Very good. Thank you. You guys hear that? You agree with that? We all agree. Yeah. I agree. We wait until we have both so, sides of the plan. So we're going to we're gonna, uh, talk to the school board before the next meeting and, and find out if we can fu get the funding to move over with the lights funding if we that. can't get the funding i still support putting up lights yeah I do. so so uh anyway let's let's do that and i'll try to have a definitive something from from the school board chester I'm gonna, okay come on up <laughs> we, <laughs> well, I saw you. But we're just trying to move on from this subject and try to get it, just, you know, get to a ending point somewhere. Chester, you playing pickleball or tennis? No. <laughs> I play football and basketball. <laughs> My name is Chester Davis. I'm a pastor of Port St. Joe at uh, Philadelphia Brennan Baptist Church. Uh, also president of the North Port St. Joe Project Area Coalition. For months, with the ball field conversation on 10th Street, I've advocated to the city that one of the problems that Robert just mentioned is that we do not highlight what's available in other areas of the town. And I think because we do not highlight those areas, you have people come with a um, attitude that that area might be blighted enough that we can't come in. But yet that area is um, filtrated daily with people from all parts of the state and this community. But I'm saying I think it's the city's responsibility to make use of all parks and areas that's available in the city, including what's on North Port St. Joe, whether they like it or not. It's time for us to forget about those the color racial barriers and all those good things. But if we have a, a site out there that can be used, we need to use it. And that's a beautiful site out there that can be used uh, for a lot of other sports activity. You have lights out there. We even have one facility that has a complete cover, uh, the length of an entire basketball court and more. But I'm saying all those things are not being used, uh, you know, for city facilities. Matter of fact, it's overlooked. And one of the things it's overlooked because we don't highlight it enough. Somewhere down the line, we need to come to the table and say, it's out there, let's use it. The city property, let's use it. Just for the last, last meeting, I, I think you didn't make that meeting. <coughs> but at that meeting, uh, we are working on the uh, covered facility, uh, putting new lights in, in Washington Gym, and there was something else that we were doing at, at Peters Park, too. Windows. So so they're not being overlooked at present time. Uh, well, I, I'm yeah. just saying for the highlighted areas. Yeah. This, is, this is a place that people can actually come and, and, and actually make the area bigger and brighter yep. by bringing in some spotlights on what can be used out there, especially the tennis courts. You got a covered facility that can be used for other sports events, including baseball and other events. Pastor Davis, uh, I will say at the last meeting, are you listening? <laughs> I will say at the last meeting, uh, I did bring up the option of having the courts out there, and it was kind of brought up in the public that maybe that's not what, what needs to be there. Maybe it doesn't need to be a tennis court. So we did discuss having our Recreation and Parks and Rec Committee, part of the FERDAP Committee,
talk about what is the highest and best use. Maybe the best thing to do is to tear that up and put something else there. Uh, but it, it was discussed, and there is some insurance money that we've talked about. Uh, but at the time, they didn't feel that you know pickleball or tennis was maybe the sport that was needing needing to be represented there. So we're we're not, we have the we have the land, we have the space, and there's plenty of parking. Yeah, yep. absolutely. And for Walker. Okay, guys, uh, let's uh, put this on the uh, agenda for the next meeting and, and hope we can come to a resolution uh, one way or the other. And uh, we'll move on to the next item uh, under Public Works. Can we get Jason yeah. Tenell to give us an update, Mayor? Yeah, we'll, these folks are, are easing out, and then Jason will let you come up. Uh, <coughs> Thank you all for coming, by the way. We, we appreciate everybody coming. Jason Tennell uh, with uh, BCC, uh, give us an update on uh, how things are going with, with them and uh, entertain any questions or comments. Jason. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, commissioners. I, uh, I mean, everything's, the transition has gone extremely smooth. Um, we're uh, still dealing with a few issues at the transfer station that we're working through, but it's not affected the city transition at all. I know there were some questions about um, the bear proof containers and how they're serviced and the latching and the costs and all that. Um, the $8 a month is not for the contraption that's being put on the containers. Uh, the $8 a month is for the service. So $2 a week for the driver to get out, unlatch the thing, and and dump it so it's not necessarily for the contraption and some folks have asked if um, they can install them we really don't want them to install them because then we don't have we can't keep track of who's got them and who doesn't and it's in our system of who's getting charged the eight bucks and who's not so um, other than that i mean i don't know if you guys have any questions for me but all in all i think all the feedback we're getting is that it was an extremely smooth transition What's the time frame on the transfer station to be operational? Um, I, I feel like it's going to be the end of January, the beginning of February. But, yeah. You I can't mean, keep moving it every month, every time you <laughs> It was going to be 90 days, and then it's, you know, <coughs> we're, uh, we're just, we're adapting the best we can. I mean, we're dealing with the wood chips on fire right now, which has created a whole another set of issues we're having. <coughs> because the smoke's blowing in the scale house. So if folks are going out there, that's another thing that we want to make sure the public knows. If they're going to the transfer station and they show up and it's shut down because the direction of the wind and the humidity and all the stuff we're dealing with right now is lighting those wood chips on fire and it's shutting the scale house down. So we're working all the, the whole day today, we're trying to work on a solution to keep it open even if the smoke's <coughs> there. So. To answer your question, we don't really know, but we're shooting for February. How about the um, yard debris pickup? Where are we at on that? That's That's been happening, and it's been the first week of the month is when we started doing it. The, it, the, the entire route is done the first week for the city. So it's a one, once a month? Once a month. Because I, I received several calls yeah. that, that the uh, trucks were picking up a portion of what was there and, and I think maybe we're a little spoiled mm -hmm. because when the city did it the city had a person on the ground with a rake and then they had the you know the guy with the bucket mm -hmm. picking up the stuff and they didn't leave the yard until it was properly picked up and I think your truck operation is more of grab it and go kind of thing so I would ask that you would speak to your drivers about just doing a little bit better job. I know they're not going to be able to do as good a job as we did with the city because they don't have that second man on the ground with a rake, but I think they could do a little bit better job than they've done in the past. Yes, sir. So I haven't heard that. Now I heard that, the again, we hear consistently that if it's not in the can, it's not getting picked up. So I've heard that, but I haven't heard the yeah, this was just like the uh, tree trimmings. Yes, sir. Uh, I actually went and followed the truck down Garrison one day. And uh, I'm not saying they did a terrible job, uh, but they didn't do a really good job either. So I think they could, they could improve on their service. Jason, I had a guy ask me today about uh, 
you break something the leaves, oak leaves and puts in a bag. So the leaves won't scatter everywhere after you rake them up. And uh, so if he puts the bag out, I mean, they don't know if it's, I guess, household garbage or you know, yard waste, but right. you, you got a solution to that? I mean, that you want it to, I mean. Yeah, another garbage can. I mean, that's yeah, probably the yeah. best solution. I, and that. I basically told him, I said, well, put it in the bag, put it in the garbage can. The only thing I can tell you to do, so that's what he's going to do. Because the plastic, the plastic can't go where the yard debris goes anyways. Because the yard debris goes in one spot, and the, if it's in a plastic bag, it's got to go in a different spot. Uh, I got you. Okay. I think one thing I had is making sure we address the issue that it's got to be in the can. Yeah. I mean, it, the boxes, the you know, it's Christmas coming, and the boxes have to be broken down and got to be in the can. In the can. I think uh, you get better there, though. So, I just like to stress that every time because I do get calls on that. Right. right. <clears throat> All right. Any questions, guys? Thank you for coming, Jason. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Okay, no. Let's move on to public works. Jim, traffic lights, is that John? I'll be you glad to take it. Who's sure. going to do it? Either, I'll, I'll do it, Mr. Mayor. It's fine. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we brought our traffic signal contractor in uh, as we started experiencing some issues with the traffic signal at uh, Marina Drive or First Street. And uh, we heard back from them and received a quote today, late today. I believe it should be a handout. Yeah, um, we got it. Uh, so that, you know, essentially the, the controller was, you know, went underwater. There appears to be a lot of corrosion in there, uh, which is affecting the, the timing loops. You know, nothing. Nothing really works at First Street except default. So, you know, you're getting a signal for a left turn if you're southbound, whether someone's there or not. So it, it needs to be replaced is the bottom line, uh, along with the pedestrian lights at First and at Fifth Street. Um, so they provided us with a cost. We have reached out and I spoke with John Howell at Faribault. Um, and also we have an email in to uh, Dallas Boyd with FDOT. Uh, we should be in contact with him tomorrow and the idea is to if not get a portion of that potentially paid for by FDOT all of it paid for by FDOT so I think we have some room there so what you have tonight is just for informational purposes let us continue to work with FDOT to see if we can't get them to help us and uh, get <coughs> that, you know, box repaired uh, the unfortunate thing is it's going to take a while either way to get that box built unless FDOT has one laying around which I doubt so We'll work after we get that decision from them. We'll work, you know, back with Griffin to see if there's something in there and we can do to clean that, you know, loop system up. But I'll have to come back, you know, to the board on that one. So you plan to hear back from him this week? Well, I haven't talked with, with Mr. Boyd from FDOT yet, and I have with John. Uh, so that that conversation will take place tomorrow. So I should by the end of the week hopefully have a better idea. Twenty-five thousand. I don't know. A lot of money. Come up with that. Might be some insurance money laying around, but no. again, rather, you, rather use it for something else. Our hope is we can get FDOT to to, to do that for us. That's our plan. Is there any concern that the lights would just go down? Uh, they're not going to go down. They're just not going to function properly. Uh, when I say properly on the time loop, as, as it was, you know, traffic. <clears throat> is flowing down 98 and, and there's nothing on you know first to marina it's going to continue to flow down 98 and vice versa so those timing loops do not work and will not work so you know it's just it's going to keep counting down those seconds without skipping so all right anything else probably works any other good news <laughs> <laughs> no sir, that's all i had unless there's any questions for me Nope. Nope. Okay. Right. Goodness. Let's move on to surface water. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Just a couple things. Uh, on page seven, we like to have the old city electrician's Ford van declared city surplus. Um, I feel like that it's. Uh, I've got some safety concerns about this vehicle, and we'd like to go ahead and. Uh, it's like 15 years old. And have it declared surplus. Okay. Motion to 
I, my mileage didn't look too bad until you told me it's 15 years old. Yeah, so. well, <laughs> the city, you know, that's pretty, mild, yeah. that's all, yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. Any uh, discussion on that? I'm, all in favor, aye. Aye. Those same sign, most case for oath. Okay. All righty. And Mayor, only other thing I have, uh, we have a new operator at the water plant. Scott Nissenmeyer has passed his state class C uh, state license exam for us. Very good. And worked real hard for it. That, so, that, you know it. Everybody have one now? All but one. We got one more left. Okay, good. Yes, yeah, so that's all I have. Thank you. Kevin, waste water? Uh, two things. The first one, let's, if you don't mind, we'll talk about filters. You know, we had ordered filters last year, kind of topped off my budget. About $16,000 worth of filters. That got us 618. I'm 288 filters short of finishing that. Um, the, we're blowing through filters now. We just put pressure on the old filters and they're blowing through. So shut down for the night. <coughs> so the finish up that project to get all the filters done is $37,025. I had budgeted. $30,518, you know, for filters. It's a little more than that. It's $6,500 more than what I budgeted. So what I would like to do is stop one of my other projects and just cut it short and postpone it for a year, go ahead and finish up the filters. So that's not an issue we're dealing with. Right. Stay within my budget, but I'd like to order the rest of the filters and get them all done, and that way we can lift that cap and keep going. So, Mike? Yeah, he does have, uh, find, uh, find the money? he does have 20,000 in well abandonment that he can postpone uh, and use those capital, uh, 6,500 of that 20,000 towards completing that project. So that money is available to him, and he certainly can adjust the use of those capital items. Okay. What's the pleasure of the board? He knows more about treating sewage now. Yeah. I'll take his word for it. I'm with you there, Commissioner. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll need a motion or something, anything? Yeah. To allow for staff? Yeah, and move some money around, go over budget. Uh, yeah. You know, I'll, make the motion. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Second and discussion. Of yes, sir, man. Just for clarification, that's going to be this actually falls under our sole source, if I'm not mistaken. It does fall so that way, we follow source. our procurement policy on there. So we'll make okay. sure we have that for you. Yeah. Okay. I'll add that to my motion. Okay. Thank you. For the discussion. All in favor, aye. 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 Those same sign. Good deal. Good going. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll be replacing we'll filters. All right. Uh, the second thing is, is we made an offer for electricity. <coughs> gentlemen, highly qualified. Um, extremely qualified, you might say. Um, so there's been offer extended. He's asked for um, a week of vacation to start. So that's kind of what we would like to offer. We didn't offer him the very top of the pay scale. It'd be a cheap electrician for the city. Not for me, but for, for the city. But for him to get anything like vacation, it has to be approved through the board. The personnel policy does allow for this provision to be done if we wanted to give somebody time up front. But the, the caveat is it says that it has to go through the <coughs> department head, city manager, and then formal approval by the board. So we think this is a good option for the city to get somebody, a seasoned electrician, to come on board. I think it's a small ask for to actually go ahead and give them a week's vacation and use during that first week instead of having a whole week, a whole year before they can use it. So recommendations to give this to this person as, a, as an offer in there to start that position. And I think, you know, as someone with a lot of HR background, as long as we can differentiate the reason why he's getting it, we're not setting a precedent. You know, we're doing it because he's a well-seasoned electrician and we're not paying him at the top of the scale. I'm okay with that. And we're not deviating necessarily from the personnel policy. No, so we're actually, we're, we're actually following the policy about making sure it comes before you. Because normally, uh, what would happen is it outlines that you wouldn't get a week until you've been there for one full week. But since yeah. we are coming down on the pay scale, you think it would be appropriate to bring people for you for approval. Okay. Motion to uh, accept so recommendations. Motion. motion. Second. I'll second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Same sign. Motion passed four. Oh. Thank you, gentlemen. Mr. Engineer. 
Uh oh, I skipped my, but we'll go back. I'm <laughs> following your lead. Uh, the trail line, you want to check on that. We got the, um, at the last meeting, we voted to cut the lights in half. We sent it back to do, ask for a new proposal. So I'm waiting on that. We'll also follow up with Grant folks. Uh, the road bond, we're just waiting on Roberts and Roberts. Uh, nothing for y'all or me to do on that. And then the last one is just to follow up on the workshop uh, that we had earlier with the, the Nerda grant and the two task orders that are on there for your consideration. <coughs> Okay. You're talking about the task order pertaining to the workshop for the, that just had it. For engineering for the, the process. For the, yeah, for the for the right for the stormwater master plan for the uh, yeah quality. Task one and four, I think. Uh, I'll make a motion to move forward. Okay. A motion to move forward with the uh, engineering. I'll second. I'll second. Okay. Discussion. Anyone? Any more? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passed, four of them. Ready to go. Uh, any other questions for me? Uh, start date on uh, Clifford Sims Park Road. Do you have any idea? Oh, Jenny. Yeah, Jenny Park. I don't. I mean, we're waiting on We're waiting on it. told me hopefully sometime this month, but I don't have an exact date. Okay. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Mark. I, I don't have anything specific. I did mention that we do have a meeting with FEMA on Thursday, and even though we've elected not to move forward with the, the bid on the pavilion, we certainly can follow through with the discussion about getting them to approve uh, those projects that do fall over their calculated recovery amount. Um, and, and other than that, we're moving forward with our audit prep to close out our last fiscal year. We typically get that information to audit uh, before the end of the year, so we're trying to get that out. And then I'll move forward with getting some written quotes on the tennis courts at at, uh, at this high school. Yeah, you might as well do that. And then, then in the meantime, I'll see what kind of arrangement I make with Superintendent Norton um, with any kind of lease or any kind of help they can give us on that. And based on the indication from the uh, from Mr. Grossman, that it's it, it probably going to be over the bid threshold. If he got a quote of fourteen thousand some time ago, we're probably going to have to bid that one out. Uh, well, there are two courts there. Yeah, he can bid one court, bid the other court. <laughs> okay, that <laughs> was can we do that? Potentially, or you could work up some type of agreement with the school board and they get you below that bid threshold. Okay. All right. We'll work on that. Okay. But that's all I have. Okay. Any questions for Mike? Okay. There we go. Let's go. Go to enforcement. We get that quarterly. Uh, police chief. Thank you, Mayor. I don't have anything on the agenda tonight. The board has any questions for me? I have one concerned citizen today. Uh, said that that they're noticing what they appear to have drug activity at Peters Park on the under the pavilions. He says it's a pretty regular occurrence at night. If you guys want to please patrol a little bit more okay. at, the, at the pavilion there. You're talking about the covered basketball court or the actual way? On the way to it. Table. They pull into the parking lot, right at the parking lot. We did find you a nice van tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess what? how many miles? 76,000 76, miles. miles. Yeah. Put a cage in not, the back. Not 15 years old. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> anything for the chief? Anything else? Thank you, sir. Thank you, chief. All right, Miss Charlotte. Christmas parade's still growing. I hope you're getting your golf carts, vehicles, or whatever ready. But drawing now. We appreciate the support. Good deal. I'm glad, glad to hear that. Okay, citizens to be heard. Come right up, ma'am. Good afternoon. How are you? Good evening. Speak Matthew 312 Avenue F, 4th St. Joe, Florida. And what I, I have a comment to make most of the anything about what Robert Thomas said. 
He said that the pickleball players and see the people that I was supposed to be talking to, they're gone. Well, it said the pickleball players and the tennis players was afraid to come to North Fort St. Joe because they're blighted and they're afraid and all that. But they're not afraid to come to pick up the food. They're not afraid to come when it's time when they need a job and the workforce and need to apply for a job. They're not afraid to come when it's time to pick up their vegetables on and fruits on Monday. So if they can choose when their fear come out. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly right. Okay, Mr. Branch, come up. Robert Branch, I, I'll be real brief. I uh, I listened to some of the, some of that conversation about Northside, and I uh, I've, I've I've been over numerous times over the years, and I've never had a problem. I guess because I grew up here and I knew a lot of people, but. Mr. Uh, Chester, you are right. Y'all, y'all do need to use y'all's available spaces. Uh, they, there's no denying that. At the same time, it looks like we're still hunting land on this side. And I want what I want to do is remind y'all that we still have this 60-acre field of grain. I'm, this is a copy of the deed, Mr. Painter. Thank, Thank you. And that actually it says <coughs> on that deed. It can be used for a recreational complex, non-profit. It doesn't say anything about a baseball field, pickleball, soccer, football, a recreational complex. That land can be used for the city of St. Joe. We've got the key to it. And, uh, and I'm, not, I'm not trying to uh, step on either side, but y'all have collected the city through the TDC have collected five or six years for that land and put on one <coughs> thing they went back into it. It's high and dry, the highest place in St. Joe. We talked about water. There's no water. That, that's, that's, that's ready to use. But uh, maybe, maybe the TDC it was brought up. Mr. Ashbrook, you still on you still on the board? I am, sir. And I noticed y'all did. I missed the last meeting. I've been busy, kind of flipped through it, and y'all did bring up this uh, TDC money that y'all just fair share. Mr. Hoffman, you made a good point. There's a uh, they stipulation in this statute here. Four, four and five state. You've uh, you've got to have a plan. There's, we, we need to go over it, we need to look at it, and we need to start going by it. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. <coughs> okay. All right, just to come on out. Nice. More than anything. Yesterday was uh, that president. Uh, this Saturday at the Philadelphia Primitive Baptist Church Annex, uh, we have a young lady named Tina Renee. She is a uh, experienced financial administrator and a credit consultant. Uh, she came about a month ago to Zion Fat Church for the community that the younger people and older ones that are having credit problems can come to this um, event and she can teach us a, a little bit about how we can apply our credit. Now, the reason I'm, I'm making this announcement is because I'm asking the city if you know anyone, especially, and it's, it's open to the public, that they can come. The young lady has a lot of expertise that we don't normally get that from, uh, for our younger people, even for our teenagers, you know, going into getting credit for the future and how the parents can help them out and support the form. So I'm going to come to the city and want to put it out there because we should have done it because one of the churches had to swap out, so we didn't get the information out. So I'm asking the city to let us, you know, at least be aboard somewhere in the city. Because this information you don't get, you know, free. And it's a young lady, she's coming, she don't charge anything, but she's gonna be able to help us out with understanding some of our credit, <coughs> how to buy a house, <coughs> bad credit or good credit. Uh, um, uh, she also does a, about a three hour, three to four hour, about three to four hours? Yes. Yeah, event. So anyway, we're opening this up to the public. Everybody can come. Uh, 
She is a financial advisor, consultant, and she knows what she's talking about. So I'm saying to the city, if you know anybody that's interested in buying a house, trying to get some credit established, come to this event. Uh, it's open to the public. And it's at the Philadelphia Prime Baptist Church starting at 9 a.m. Saturday morning on the 7th. Great event. It's very open to all. Very good. Thank you, Chester. Very good. Anyone else? It, it's sort of back to the tennis thing because I can understand how they feel. <laughs> you know, tennis is pretty sacred, sort of like golf, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I'm just wondering, you know, the TDC and everybody uh, has the country club, which has tennis courts out there. So I'm kind of curious are there any discussions uh, through the the members that are still out there about maybe trying to increase um, traffic with uh, tennis players? I, I'm not aware of it, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if it did happen. I mean, it's, it's a good facility. It needs resurfacing also, but uh, but I can I can see that happening I, down the road somewhere. Not anytime soon, but I, I can see it happening. Well, I, you know, resurfacing tennis courts is a lot cheaper than uh, redoing all the greens and you just heard 61 people play tennis uh, you've got a clubhouse you've got a restaurant you've got places for ladies and gentlemen to change and etc I, yeah. I just think it's a it's sort of a no-brainer if it only costs you know fourteen thousand dollars to resurface Courts. We'll ask our TDC representative. Yeah, right 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 you got it now. <laughs> yeah, and I want to want to. I'm glad to see Tom back over here and have that kind of stability. And of course, I have put in uh, the record before about the ABCs of corruption. And I just because this all this corruption that's going on in the panhandle, it's not going to go away. And I, I've talked to a couple of y'all about that. And so it has touched this county, and I'm just going to go ahead and enter this article that was in the Panama City okay. News Herald in, in our record. Okay, thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Okay, uh, commissioners. Uh, Commissioner Ashbrook, you're first. Uh, actually, I have a few things today. Uh, we talked about several times about picking up trash all around town, uh, maybe possibly having one final trash pickup after the storm. Uh, where have we gone with that, Mayor? Have we looked into what it would cost to do another debris pickup around town? I don't think we have. I, I know Commissioner uh, Langston has been working hard on, on a plan, but as far as getting uh, ash bread or somebody like that back for, for a week, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty sure we haven't discussed it. Don't know what it would cost. <coughs> At a 10,000 foot level, basically what we've done is we've really worked everything through code enforcement. I think John has picked up, I think, 60 or so in the last oh, yeah. two weeks. But we did just kind of look at conceptually what you were looking at, what's on the ground, what the cost is. Now, if you go to an advertiser, you probably will have three times as much as what you have on the ground. But looking on the ground, I think that number came back just conceptually looking at at least $50,000 is what kind of. North of that, yeah. So, well, I was moving target, so it's hard exactly. to Exactly. So it's hard to substantiate exactly what that number is until that day they get it all back to the scale and weigh it. Because you won't have to pay well, I'm that. assuming they're going to charge us by the load, but one of the things I was going to recommend, why don't we reach out to someone like Kim Hunter that's got eight or nine of those pickup arm trucks that can, that can do it here locally. Uh, yeah. Maybe we could get a better deal or a price doing it like that. They have the trucks already with the arms on them. Not a bad idea. Um, there was an issue, I actually spent the day, well, part of my day, driving around uh, MLK and up and down the avenues, and there are two trailers sitting right there at MLK and Avenue F. There's no license plate on them, but they're parked right on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And I well, saw right. yeah, I saw a couple of kids riding their bike that jutted out onto the street right in front of me, yep. which is how I noticed them. They're under a code. They're under a code, they're they're under a code they're written up. Which brings me over to my next point. <laughs> If we do it just one more time trash pickup, I think we as a board maybe need to allocate some money into a code enforcement budget that allows us, once we determine there's a violation, if we can't hand it to somebody, that doesn't mean we should ignore it. We should have to pick that up. Um, I don't know how to go about it, but I think if we can even start with just putting 10 grand in the budget in a future year to say, 
if, you, if somebody put it on a vacant piece of land and we can't pin down who did it, we can't just let it sit there. We've got to do we, something about we it. We are picking those up as, as we speak, yes. I've got Mr. a bunch of addresses <laughs> for you then. Okay. Mr. Burkett, <laughs> Mr. Burkett does try to associate it with a with a homeowner or a violator, but if he can't, yes, sir. It, it's goes, hard into, to do it goes into hopper to be picked up. We have to pick those up. Commissioner, <clears throat> we had 26 uh, to pick up this week through code enforcement, and three of those were unidentified. Well, well, I'm just saying yeah, that's pretty, pretty good, comes to pretty our good average for us. Another, yeah. you know, all but three. Right. That's really good. Um, also, another one along the lines of Peters Park, um, lack of trash cans. Uh, there's a lot of garbage just right there by the parking lot. They're asking if they can have a trash can right there in the parking lot. Um, I thought, why not? If we have some, if we can get a trash can out there. Hopefully, instead of throwing your trash out the window on the floor, they'll put it in a garbage can. Uh, let's see. And I did want to thank Chester, he's still here, that credit counseling, that it's, it's one of the parts that a lot of times I think we forget. We can build all the affordable housing and, and affordable homes, but if the bank won't give you the money, it's not affordable. And so thank you for offering those programs. It's very beneficial to the citizens. And that is all I have. Okay. <coughs> wow. The only thing I had was uh, uh, employee Christmas party slash dinner. Um, as I know I spoke to you, Jim. Um, a date and time and all that are everybody good with doing one for the employees? Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've had a conversation with a few of you um, over the last couple of days. Interest trying to put something together. So I think what we need to do is we need to try to figure out the day we want to try to do it and what we want to try to do. So yeah, I, I think we can definitely do it. Uh, I know we looked at dates potentially. Uh, December 20th. I with Commissioner Hawkins the other day we were talking about, I think I mentioned to you too, we were thinking maybe the 20th may be a decent day, that's a Friday, mm -hmm. because if you move into the Christmas week, a lot of people are already taking plans to take off, so maybe you could do a later lunch, and that way you could actually shut down to have time for all the employees to come together with the city commission to have a, have a lunch, but that's up to you. Yeah, I like that idea. Later lunch, kind of like we did last year. Yeah, and uh, just for the record, it will not be a Christmas party. It's actually considered a employee appreciation day. And that way, we can uh, stay out of problems, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, Tom. Yeah, and that's the only thing that I was actually going to speak about as well. Uh, I would like to furnish the employees. Last year, we had a business or. Actually, I think it was the former attorney purchased the turkeys, mm -hmm. and this year we're going to do hams. This is enough people told me they didn't want another turkey, so, <laughs> so I'm good with the ham. And I guess Tom, you'll be buying the hams this year <laughs> since you're in that seat. Yeah. That's all I have. Okay. All right. All right. I've got a, a, a couple of things. Uh, first thing, uh, about a month ago. Uh, had a meeting with uh, with Warren Yeager with the uh, <coughs> consortium about our uh, half million dollars that we have allocated for this year uh, to hopefully move that uh, over to help uh, complete the uh, sewer project in North Fort St. Joe. Uh, last Tuesday, County Commission meeting, they voted 5-0 not to do that. Uh, <coughs> got a, uh, a letter here from uh, Sandy Quinn uh, wants to have a workshop, uh, so I don't know what they want to workshop on, but but I guess we can have one at some point. So so uh, the point being made is I'm I'm disappointed. Uh, it has been a very good uh, Christmas present for the city to uh, to have something that would uh, would benefit be very beneficial to us. At the present time, uh, I, I know the East Side sewer system has been on our on our plate for for several years. We've we've indicated uh, more than once that, that at the right time and the right price we might be interested in it. But but uh, at the present time, as as one vote, I'm I'm still not uh, interested in in that that system. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, I don't, you know, it, it just, 
it's just disappointing to me that, that we had a project that, that we wanted and it got turned down. All the other projects under the pot three money were never voted on by this commission. They, it was our money and that we were told we were going to spend it on these projects. And, uh, and so uh, I, I'm, I'm disappointed. I, I still like to have a workshop. They like to talk about uh, uh, helping us reallocate that money to help North Fort St. Joe complete their sewer system. I'd be more than willing to uh, entertain that workshop. So if you guys uh, would like to consider a workshop, I, you know, I'd like to set it up and set it up here at the city city uh, meeting chambers and uh, let's talk about it. They want to cooperate with us and uh, let's hope that we can, we can, that can work. I think the workshop is a good idea. I took the time to watch the county commission meeting yeah. uh, the few minutes where they voted on it yeah. and the information that was presented to the county commissioners was not accurate and I think that at the workshop and I reached out to one of the county commissioners myself and explained to him that the information in my opinion was far from accurate the deal on taking or not taking the plant at Gulf Air was presented in a different light. So I think the workshop would give us an opportunity to give facts to the county commissioners and maybe they will reconsider that vote that they took. Okay. Yeah, I agree as well. We need, uh, um, that we need to definitely need that workshop. Um, uh, had a conversation with Mr. Yeager today and uh, he said, let's, let's move forward and talk about it. And so, uh, Yeah, everybody's we willing just to got to, We got to look at dates. December is extremely crowded, uh, but there's limited time to, to spend. <coughs> excuse me, spend that money too. We just got to be spent by uh, June or July of 2020. Is that right? Yes, sir. I think we're we're staring down. We need to go out to bid. But regardless of the money, if you could get approval for it, I think it would go a long ways towards helping out at North Fort St. Joe. Whether you went out to bid separately or you did it independently on there. First, you got to get approval to be able to use that money to. Right, right. Yeah. So, do you guys want to shoot, shoot for a time in December? It might be difficult with everything going on, but I'm, I'm fine with it. And uh, at whatever time of day you guys want to meet, we'll reach out to the county and ask if they can. Uh, uh, let's see, available dates to schedule a workshop is what they request. What about the, the 18th prior to uh, the next meeting? You mean 17? Uh, 17. Oh, wait. Yeah, I'm looking at a 2018 calendar, so. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let me get on the right year. You got a meeting on the 17th. You got a meeting on the No, that's no, we, we, no, the 15th. 12 o'clock meeting. Uh, well, you want to do prior or after? 12 o'clock meeting. I don't know. We'll do prior. Prior to or what are you thinking of? It'd be fine. On the 17th? I mean, I'd be back. You're in Tallahassee at that time. <coughs> okay. All right. What about, uh, what about the 10th? Or the, possibly the 19th then? 19th is back. Tuesday the 10th? 19th is what? 19th is good. Good. 19th? My only thinking was on the 17th, just in case we need to vote on something. Uh, Do well, we before I, the 17th? I mean, if, if we... <clears throat> well, we can't, well, I see what you're following. saying. Yeah, I follow you. We could, uh, we could roll it over in uh, January meeting. Yeah, on the 1st. Or move the 17th meeting to six o'clock and have the workshop at five o'clock. So we've noticed some we, things. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. we've already noticed we have yeah. two uh, yeah. planning issues. Here. Throw out some dates, guys. That's going to be can't, You really can't make the early I mean, an hour. I the meeting that day. Uh, I don't know when I'll be back. Um, 
The 19th was good. 19th at noon? Yeah, sure. Okay. okay. Jim, if you'll uh, contact the uh, uh, Chairman Quinn and see if the 19th at noon would be work for them. That'd be great. So, no back and we can do Thank you. Uh, the only other thing I had was was our our uh, prior attorney, uh, Paul Britton, uh, <coughs> did a good job for us. I, I want to say that. I, I'd like to also say his his letter of resignation was uh, very professional and very complimentary of, of the staff uh, that we have here and and the commission. So uh, I appreciate him doing that, and uh, I, I wish him well. And, I don't have anything else. We'll stand adjourned. So move. Thank you.